December 7, 1941, a date that will live in infamy as stated by President Franklin Roosevelt after the Japanese commenced an airstrike on Hawaii on a Hawaiian military base at 7.48 a.m. 78 years ago today. We take you now to Pearl Harbor, where hundreds gathered to mark the 78th anniversary of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The day's VIPs included Hawaii dignita dignitaries, military leaders, and dozens of World War II veterans. The surprise Pearl Harbor attack on the morning of December 7, 1941, dealt America a historic blow when the last Japanese fighter planes left Hawaii skies Two hours and 20 minutes after the attack had started, 2,403 Americans were dead. The Pacific Fleet was in ruins and the United States was thrown into war. Back here at the Capitol in Helena, here in Montana, where families, veterans and service members gathered to remember those that lost their lives during the attack on Pearl Harbor. The names of 14 Montanans who lost their lives that day were read at today's ceremony and wreaths were placed in their honor. Jerry Dullum and his family were in attendance to remember his uncle and namesake, electrician's mate, third class Jerry Dullum. I'm just glad to see a lot of people here that just remember and, and support all this. And I hope we can continue of those 14 Montanans, one was from here in Billings. Richard Ignacio was in the Marine Corps Private First Class. His remains were not recovered and was declared missing in action or lost at sea. Sheep ranchers say their industry paid for the state of Montana, contributing to the economy in the, in the 1880s. Now this weekend, the Montana Wool Growers Association held its 136th annual convention. The ranchers raise sheep for meat and for wool. The convention brings them together to talk about the issues, predators, fiber and product development, and government regulations. Government regulations, I don't think it's any more of a challenge for us than it is in any other industry. Uh, we have to uh, we have to address it. You cannot not address it because it'll eat you. The predator issue has always been a challenge, and market share on market development. If you aren't progressing, you're losing. It's just something that you always have to keep going. The Montana Wool Growers Association started in 1883, six years before Montana became a state. The Montana Highway Patrol came together today with the U.S. Marine Corps Reserves to help with Toys for Tots. Stockman Bank hosted the fifth annual Pack the Patrol Car. The Marines and troopers collected gifts in the final toy drive of the season. Santa Claus also helped with the festivities. And this drive is just a reminder that many during this time of year give back to the community making Toys for Tots successful. It's really amazing when you come to stuff like this and the amount of people that show up and show support and are willing to uh, give back to the community and, and be selfless. The people that are coming out to give gifts, uh, they're, they're for sure going to put a smile on the face of a child somewhere and I think the big goal is that every child gets a gift at Christmas and I think seeing everybody rally around that is a huge thing and it's great to be a part of something like that. A very important part of Christmas is for the kids to learn both sides of it, both the giving and the receiving side. And there's no problem with the receiving side. Every kid learns that on the 25th. That's no problem at all. So this is a good opportunity to uh, reinforce the benefits of giving. It's not about the Marines getting out and showing face or anything like that. It's about us as a community coming together to help less fortunate. And the U.S. Marine Corps Reserves will be giving out the toys next week at the Metro Park Expo Center. P.B. Moss and his family enjoyed Christmas in their home starting in early 1900s. And today, a celebration at the Moss Mansion helped Toys for Tots as well. The big... Oh, hark, the herald angels sing. Oh, hear the angel voices. The Big Sky Chorus and the sweet Adeline sang Christmas carols at the Moss Mansion toy drive. Families donated toys for a chance to see the 15 Christmas trees that decorated the home. The trees helped tell stories about Christmas in other countries. The moss celebrated just like all families in Billings. It's a whole other level of, of being grateful for being able to be here and share this space because this is one of a kind. There is literally no other place on earth like the Moss Mansion, and we're very lucky here in Billings to have it. And so it's wonderful to be able to share that and the magic of Christmas with our community. The Moss Mansion will host some other events this month, Not So Silent Night and Christmas Spirits at the Moss.
Keeping the holiday spirit alive throughout Billings today, Christmas music could be heard ringing from five homes across the area as the Billings Symphony and, Car and Chorale put on a show for its annual holiday tour of homes. Take a listen to some of the music. Well, I'm sure you recognize the classic Christmas tune, Jingle Bells. This home at 42 Clark Avenue was built in 1905 and was one of the five beautifully decorated ab abodes showcased on the symphony's tour. Now, people with a ticket could tour each home while listening to beautiful music. Musicians think music is a wonderful way to get people into the spirit of the holidays. We saw a couple of people dancing. <laughs> there were some smiles and some humming and so it was a nice way for people to tour a beautiful home decorated for the holidays with the music behind as a nice backdrop. The tour is a fundraiser for the symphony's Healing Harmonies program where music is brought to people who might not usually hear it like rural schools, hospitals and prisons. Stay with us, more to come on the 5.30 news. After the break, turn the clock back 20 years to one prime location for snowmobilers. And in sports, Scott shows us how your cats and grizz both roll to playoff wins. But first, let's check in with our friend Rob Griggs over in the Weather Center. Well, hey Zoe, we've got another round of wintry weather zeroing in on us for tomorrow. And this time we could see some more freezing rain and hazardous travel. We'll give you the complete Q2 Storm Tracker forecast in just a few minutes. You're watching MTN News with Zoe Zandora, Storm Tracker Weather with Rob Griggs, and Sports with Casey Conlon. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.